Well, a big old happy Friday. It is a cheers to your beers, theater, space cadet kind of Friday. Kelly, how you doing? <laughs> that is the, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about space and how you can enter a contest to go up to the International Space Station. But not really. NASA's like, uh, not so quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, last night, I tried to attend a Caps game in real life. That did not go as planned. They were playing the beloved Buffalo. We're going to get into that. And also this dancing grandma that is going viral this morning. Who doesn't love a good dancing grandma to start your weekend? She's amazing. Plus, cheers to your beers is much better than tears in your beers, I suppose. And the Kennedy Center has announced their lineup. They're going to bring back Hamilton. Spoiler alert, Deborah Rudder, the president of the Kennedy Center, breaks it all down for us. Plus, um, something that they're going to be doing differently after the pandemic that they never did before. We'll get into that. If you want to catch up with any of our past shows, you can go to the Real Fun DC app or search Tommy and Kelly anywhere you get your podcasts to get involved. Live from DC. Broadcasting around the Beltway and beyond, it's Tommy and Kelly made in DC on the Real Fun DC channel and on demand anytime, anywhere you get your podcasts. All right, let's get started with, oh man, this is, this is exciting stuff. 10 years of beers. Kelly, how you doing? 10 years of beers. Ready for this? Go for it. All right. So DC Brow, DC's beloved beer company, is celebrating a huge milestone. They have celebrated a decade of brewing beer in DC. Now, this is awesome because they're the first brewers to be happening in the district um, since the 1950s, which is really cool. I thought that was like fun to point out that they were the first ones. 56 was the last time brew was beered. Beer was brewed in DC since they opened. First year they did like 2,000 barrels, and now they're doing like 16,000 barrels of beer. You take one down, you pass it around, everyone gets drunk. <laughs> um, I love some DC Brow, and um, but it is on my bucket list. I've never been in real life to their brewery. I'll have to add that to the list when things become a little bit more normal. Um, I yes, that I don't drink a lot of beer, but that that is the beer of choice. Drink local. I was there once um, for. Uh, they were doing an event around beer week and their, their, their tap room is just like super cool. There's like, just like grit and stickers and story like everywhere. Plus breweries just have that like hops. They just have that smell to them that it's just, it's so great to go. And I don't drink a lot of beer either. I, I drink it like, you know, once in a while, but it's just, it's so fun to be in a place that makes something like that. Very cool. And they've done so many cool collaborations and things throughout the years. So way to go, DC Brow. 10 years making it happen. Love you don't it. look you don't look a day over eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are we going to space? What's happening here? Okay, so I got, actually I've got my glasses here. I've got to read all this because I want to get it right because you know my husband works in space and when I don't get it right, um, I'm a, I get into you know, a lot of trouble. Okay, sure, so sure. He, here's the deal. There's this company called Space Hero, and they've signed a Space Act agreement with NASA that they're going to do a contest, a global contest, where they're going to find people that can compete for a spot on the International Space Station. Sounds very cool. Sounds like Survivor. Uh, a, a little bit. A little bit. And then NASA's statement was, <laughs> this does not authorize a private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. Rather, it's a non-reimbursable Space Act agreement for the purpose of facilitating initial cooperation, yada, yada, yada. What it basically means is that we're in an agreement with you guys. You guys can do this competition. We might steal from your homework and do our own thing to find the best astronaut to go up to the International Space Station. Oh, okay. So it's more like, I was talking to my husband about it, it's more like bragging rights. Like if you get just selected by this, that means that you've gone through the necessary training and all the things, psych evaluations, all the things that you do to make you an astronaut. You get kind of the bragging rights, but you don't necessarily get to go. Got it. And then NASA might say, okay, we like your practices here. We're going to steal your homework. So it's kind of like wearing a jersey to the game there's a chance they're gonna put you in but it's not a great chance <laughs> right it's pretty slim i guess <laughs> one, one way to look at it huh. well that's yes. it. i also would love to know how many space act agreements are being signed out there because that sounds like a super fun thing to try to do i know a yeah space act agreement with nasa but it's uh, what was the word non-reimbursable if you get a space act agreement signed, you frame that on your wall. Like you definitely <laughs> put that up on the wall. You right. frame bridge that ish and you put it up there and you're like, there's yeah. my space act agreement. Maybe you've yeah. seen it <laughs> with the NASA logo for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Now, does that like, I oh, have so many questions. If a space act agreement means you get to like have a action towards space or now you're or going like, down the path that this is where we get into trouble, Tommy, just walk away. Okay. I, I gave you the story. I read the quote. We're done. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Uh, let's talk about fun dancing grandmas because that's more in our lane. I love this. So last night was the WNBA draft, which is just incredible to see these young women that have worked hard their entire careers get an opportunity to play professional basketball. And uh, last night, uh, the, this young lady, her name is Michaela Onyewere. She is an incredible young lady. She has um, been playing for UCLA. She's um, got a big family. She's from Nigeria. She was drafted. She was the number six draft pick. She uh, awesome. got drafted to be with New York Liberty. Um, and while her achievements are incredible, it is her grandmother in the background that kind of stole the show. Take a look. Here we go. And grandma, grandma's got it. Grandma's got it. Oh, well, thank you so much. So much love to you and your family. Go grandma. <laughs> she is awesome. Yeah, it is just kind of incredible. Um, anyone that has a grandmother that's like, first off, her outfit is just colorful and bright and festive, and she's so happy for her granddaughter. So I, I just love that. One more time on grandma. Here we go. And grandma, grandma's got it. Grandma's got it. Oh, well, thank you so much. So much love to you and your family. Go, grandma. That is awesome. <laughs> So very cool. But also congratulations to all those young lady that that um, got, you know, the dream of a lifetime to be in that draft and be able to pursue professionally uh, their their dreams. So yesterday, something incredible happened. I got to see Kelly face to face. Mm. I haven't seen you face to face in a very long time. I actually crashed your date with your husband. Um, you were at Haleo in downtown and I don't live far from there. So I ran over to see you guys before the Caps game. Yeah, we uh, Caps. We were excited that the Caps have started welcoming fans into the stadium. And um, every now and again, the Caps play my husband's favorite team, the Buffalo Sabers. And last night was one of those. And so he had this dream of like he was going to run into some Caps fans that had ex extra tickets because there's only a couple thousand that are let into the stadium, and only season ticket holders were offered those spots. And he just had this fantasy that he was just going to be like, "Hey, you know, I love hockey. You love hockey. How about you sell us some tickets?" <laughs> And um, I, I left you for to go for a run on the mall as you were going to figure that situation out. Did like, I mean, as people were going in, were they like excited? Were they like, <laughs> hey, you look like a Caps fan. Can I help you out, Stedman, Kelly? So we, um, first off, parking is plentiful down there. <laughs> which is kind of the first tip off. Um, we went down and, and, and um, no. It didn't work out the way it was supposed to because one, they were doing separate entrances, right? So like the main entrance, the will call entrance, which is where you think most people would be coming in because of social distancing and all that. There was, they had all these different entrances open. Um, so I, my husband kind of like left me for a little bit and I went to go to try to bet because the sports book is down there. I signed up for the William Hill app and set up my account, verified my, I was over the age of 21 to do a little betting um, while he went to go look for tickets and literally did not see one single Caps fan down there. Didn't see any rock in the red. Didn't see anything. So you told me that yesterday and I, I ran past Capital One Arena and I was like, awesome opportunity to be a joiner because you know that I love to do that about sports. So I was like, yay, Caps fans, Caps fans seeing hockey tonight. Woo! I posted it on my Twitter. And then the first reply to my tweet came in, Kelly. Yes. That, um, well, what had happened was guy posted the Washington Post article that the Caps aren't welcoming fans until next game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> that explains a lot because it was a ghost town. And I was like, what is happening here? So the reason why you didn't see any Caps fans is because they were all at home. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, as you know, I went along for the ride. My husband, it was really important for him to see his team. I didn't ask a lot of questions. I didn't try to micromanage. I just let him be in control. No, now, no. now we know the answer. <laughs> Well, maybe next time. In fairness, I hadn't kept this secret. For, like, I didn't know this yesterday. It wasn't like I was like keeping this from yesterday because I would have absolutely followed him with a camera <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he learned that that was happening. But um, when I got home last night, I saw this tweet and I was like, yeah, 
That makes a lot of sense. So um, the first game will be against the Islanders on the 27th, which is when the Caps fans will be allowed back in the stands. Okay. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there, there, that explains a lot because I was actually really depressed not being able to see fellow fans. Um, and BTW, the Sabres are the worst team in the NHL, literally the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. I believe the Seattle Kraken is above them and, <laughs> and they don't even have a team yet. Uh, and they beat the Caps last night. Yeah. So... And it was unfortunate because it was Backstrom's like a thousands game and they had all this presentation around celebrating him and they lost to the worst team in the NHL, four to two. Yeah. But it's because you guys weren't in the stands. That's why. <laughs> if if they were if fans were allowed back in the stands, you would have been in there and you would have oh been my God. on. <laughs> it's depressing. Also, um, I'm actually kind of glad that you guys didn't get in there because can you imagine if there were two thousand fans allowed in the stands? And somehow you got in there and your husband was wearing Sabres gear, they would have ripped him apart. <laughs> yeah, but I had my Caps gear on, so I would have been I would have been protecting. I guess, but like Caps fans are usually pretty like docile, like happy creatures, but like like <laughs> I can imagine them being an issue if like one of two two thousand was a, a Sabres fan that was in there. <laughs> it happens. I mean, I went up to Philadelphia to uh, see the Flyers. Um, now I was guest of the Flyers, so I did not wear my caps thing. Mm -hmm. But yes, it would have not gone very well. No, no, gosh, if they're no, they are no. not docile creatures. No, 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 yeah, in Philadelphia, no. no. There is a reason their mascot is gritty. <laughs> yeah, it's for sure. He's kind of the personification of the whole vibe. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, speaking of, we'll, we'll get our dates right too on fans going back to the stands at the Kennedy Center. So they announced their big fall lineup. We're talking like mega stuff like Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen and Mean Girls in Oklahoma and Hades Town, the most recent Tony Award winner, like all of the shows. And Deborah Rudder, uh, the president of the Kennedy Center, joined me yesterday to talk about the season, the opening, what it's going to look like, and also um, what the Kennedy Center is going to do differently now that we are getting through this situation we're in. Um, so let's check out that conversation. It's interesting. Maybe something the Kennedy Center is doing for their 50th season because it's 50 years old and beyond um, is something your office is also now doing. Check it out. I am excited about the new season on a myriad of levels. Mostly, though, is how it will demonstrate that we at the National Cultural Center believe that art is for everyone and that everyone can and should be able to see themselves. The best thing that I'm looking forward to in the 50th anniversary is for us to continue to demonstrate that. How long have you and the team kept the Dear Evan Hansen Hamilton secrets, this whole lineup? Well, the leitmotif of the last 14 months for all of our programmers has been about taking apart a season, putting it back together again taking it apart, putting it back together, and really trying to understand when and how we could put the season together. So Dear Evan Hansen and Hamilton, of course, were at the very end of the last season. So that has been in the mix since the very beginning. Exactly when those dates are gonna be, were going to be really have just fallen into place in the last few months. What's the ticket situation? There's a subscription. How do people get to see shows at the Kennedy Center? Well, you know, we don't actually sell all of our tickets on subscription. We have quite a number of programs that we offer that are outside of subscription in addition to the subscription series. What we do is we renew the subscribers who have been in the past into the seats that they want first. And then the new subscribers come in after that and, and we fill out the house that way. But we never sell completely out on subscription. There's always availability for single tickets. We're talking about shows like The Prom and Mean Girls, Oklahoma, Blue Man Group, Hades Town, the Tony Award winner. That all starts in October. But can we see shows at the Kennedy Center before then? The first actual moment that you can come and see a performance at the Kennedy Center will be sometime later this spring through the summer. Those That's... will be for smaller audiences. But when you think what the life was like previously, and with larger audiences, it will be in the fall. And we've announced programming for September. In any case, at any time, we will only do what is really safe for our audiences, our artists, and all of our people. What has the Kennedy Center on a whole learned 
from this experience that you're like, you know what, we could have done this better, or we are now going to do this this way. What's something that's like a silver lining from the pandemic? Well, when I came to the Kennedy Center, there was actually a, a rule in our personnel manual that said there will be no such thing as remote work. And for all these people who work seven days a week, really late at night, who'd have to get back in the car or on the bus or on the train and come back into the center first thing the next morning without being able to really recover and be more productive. Um, this whole issue of remote work has, has proven to be very, very successful. Now, when you're creating live performance, we all have to show up. That's what live performance is in person uh, in that way. So many of us will be spending a lot of time back at the Kennedy Center, but we will be able to be so much more efficient and effective because of this whole process of being able to do video conferencing. And when you're in the performing arts, there's sort of a badge of honor that says, we got another show, the show must go on, the show will go on again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. What we can learn is that flexibility does work, that we can all support one another a whole lot better and that uh, we can work smarter and not harder. And I think that that is uh, something that we all need to take to heart. Deborah Rutter, the president of the Kennedy Center. 